denoising, the art of squeezing all the details you can out of an image. We're going to be testing out doing single pass denoising, multi pass, and temporal denoising inside of Blender. Welcome to this video on doing denoising inside of Blender. Uh, we're going to be using this scene, which is a uh, 3D scene made by my friend Red Hoot and uh, it's actually available for sale on my Gumroad, so links in the uh, description below. Uh, the project files for this tutorial is also available on my Gumroad, but if you don't fancy uh, paying for the actual files, stick around for the full information in the uh, um, video tutorial and you'll be able to put something up together yourself. So uh, with that said, let's, uh, let's get started. So the first method of doing denoising inside of Blender is to use the uh, denoise node. And we're going to be doing a single pass denoise and having a look at what kind of quality and results we get from that. So we're going to be denoising this little animation and we're going to be doing just a frame for now. So the first thing you need to do in Blender is to make sure that in the view layer passes you enable denoising data inside of the compositor. That way you get access to the regular beauty image, but also the normal and the albedo, which is something that the denoising node needs. So we're going to put down one of those nodes, it's called denoise. And we're going to hook up the uh, beauty, the normal and the albedo. Now let's just switch to the uh, uh, image editor and have a look at the output. So you can see the actual render is quite noisy, but if you compare it now with the denoised version, it's, it's a lot cleaner. One thing that this method isn't particularly good at is retaining textual detail. So you'll see that even though it's getting rid of a lot of the noise, it's still quite soft and blobby and blurry. And that's something we're going to be taking a look at in the multi-pass setup coming up next. But first, let's have a look at the uh, these two in comparison and playing the sequence back. So let's take a look at the multi-pass setup instead. And for that, we're going to need to enable all the um, light channels for the diffuse and the glossy and also the environment. And what we're going to do is denoise the passes individually and then recombine them to, uh, to the full beauty. And then let's compare uh, doing this method versus the single pass method. So uh, I'm going to speed this up a little bit. So this method of doing a multi-pass way yields a little bit sharper result, but you also have a lot more control over the overall uh, image denoising process. It also allows you to do things like perhaps sharpening the, uh, the actual diffuse color a little bit, so you can do uh, local contrasting, uh, get more perceived sharpness. The multi-pass denoising method is a little bit more CPU intensive, but I find it to give me much sharper results. It still has the issues of being temporally unstable. It can somewhat flicker if you have it low sample renders. So let's take a look at temporal denoising next. And temporal denoising requires you to have uh, multiple frames available for your render. So in this case, we have an EXR sequence of about 50 frames, and we're going to be denoising uh, three frames at a time. And uh, we've loaded an EXR sequence here containing the uh, RGBA of the image, but also the motion vectors. And if you're not familiar with motion vectors, they are essentially colored pixels that describe the direction a pixel is heading. So it's very useful for doing things like adding motion blur. But we can also use it to push the pixels around uh, to our advantage. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be duplicating the uh, uh, read node because we want uh, three different frames. We want the uh, previous frame, so we're going to push it by one frame. And we're going to be pushing it another frame backwards as well. So essentially we now have the current frame, the next frame, and the previous frame. And what we want to do is combine them, and we're going to be using a mix node. 
and we want to set them to uh, add because we want to be producing an average of all three of these frames. So um, we're going to be duplicating it again. And if you look at it now, because it's all additive together, it's going to be a lot brighter. So we need to normalize it back down to uh, the original uh, range. And we can do that by just um, multiplying the uh, value down by uh, 1 over 3, which is 0 0.3333. So now we have the... Um, oh, we got to do it here. we got to set the, the actual multiplication value here. So. So now this is the same as this, uh, but the image is a lot cleaner. But we are getting some doubling up or tri tripling up effects because we're not using the motion vectors yet to push the pixels into the same space. So while we get some cleaner areas here where there's a, a decent amount of overlap, uh, let's take a look at how we can fix some of these uh, the tripling up effects. So we're going to be taking the um, the uh, 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 next frame, and we're going to be putting down a displace node. We're going to be plugging in the image into the displace, uh, into the image input, and the vector into the displacement. And if we have a look at it now, then nothing's going to change because we just set the values to be at one. So by doing this, we now should have something. If we compare the current frame with the displaced next frame, you get something that looks very, very similar. They operate in the same space. So if we do the same thing with the um, previous frame, so we duplicate it, we plug the image in, the color in, and the motion vectors, and we need to scale it by minus one, because we want to push these pixels back to where they're supposed to be. So if we're doing this right now, then we have three frames, the original frame, the next frame displaced and the previous frame displaced and they should all kind of live in the same uh, uh, same space so if we rewire these in now and have a look at the uh, the output you can now see that most of the uh, tripling up effects have disappeared and you can especially see if we if we expose up a little bit you can see the difference in quality even though this is just a fully noisy 64 pixel sample render you can see that it's a lot cleaner than the um, uh, raw render. So if we compare it again, and what you also end up with is something that's much, much more temporally stable. And of course, you can combine all methods. You can take the uh, multi-pass version and feed it into the uh, temporal average setup, and you get a very, very clean and stable and predictable result. So up until this point, we've been doing an average of three frames, but you can also do a median of three frames, and that'll help get rid of some of these edge artifacts that you get from uh, just averaging together three frames and some of the uh, duplication on the uh, uh, on the lamppost here or on the signpost here. So uh, if we go to a frame where it's quite visible that you get a tripling up of um, uh, uh, of the geometry, we can take a look at the uh, uh, the median way of doing it, and because a median will just remove stuff that is a difference between the frames, uh, and, and keep sort of the stuff that's very close to each other, you, you get rid of a lot of the um, sort of extra duplicated edges. It won't get rid of everything completely. Like you can still see there's some some um, some overlap, but in terms of um, getting rid of some of that ghosting, it's it's a lot better. So we go go to a frame such as 1042, we take a look at one of these sides and we have a look at the average, you can see that you get these edge artifacts here, and um, let's take a look at the, uh, the um, sign again up here, and if we take a look at the median version, you can see that it, it gets rid of a lot of the stuff that's, um, that's not wanted. There are a couple of caveats with doing temporal denoising, one of them being that the first and the last frame of the sequence won't work because you're trying to average a frame that's either black or is not available, so do keep that in mind. 
Anyway, that's all about denoising for now. Thanks so much for watching and make sure to check out the files on Gumroad if you're interested in supporting me. And as always, have a good day.